Hi, Carl Kasgard, and another episode of NAS, Nanton Aviation Station. And we're here at the Bomber Command Museum of Canada. And uh, Dave, it's, uh, it's an informal uh, shop night tonight, but we wanted to find out about the library, and you've been here many years. You're a founder, you're a director of the museum, and an accomplished art author. And uh, so we wanted to ask you about the museum and uh, some of the uh, items that you have here and some of the important work that's being done, like research of bomber crews. So give us a rundown. Well, the library here uh, contains a lot of uh, pretty special items. Uh, first of all, there's a bunch of artwork in the, on the walls around here. Uh, a lot of it is, is really valuable artwork that doesn't fit into specific displays that we have in the museum, so I kind of keep it here uh, so I can see it all the time. Uh, there's a large window over here which uh, opens out into the display area and allows visitors to look into, into our library and archives, but uh, the door is, is always locked unless there's somebody in here. That doesn't mean that we don't allow people into the library. We, we welcome uh, researchers or anybody who wants to come in here, but uh, we, we you know, ask them to plan ahead and, and let us know and make an appointment. And then, uh, then we, we help them with whatever they want to do. And we've had lots of uh, researchers in here uh, looking for material. We've got, uh, I'll just kind of go around and as I think of things, we've got a, a collection over there of uh, uh, over 100 log books that are all cataloged and searchable. So if we're looking for 625 Squadron log books, we can find them. Our guys who trained at Vulcan, we can find them. Uh, our computer over here has uh, a photo library of uh, 14,000 cataloged photos, again, which are searchable. Uh, all our archives in these uh, filing cabinets are, are now in, the, in a database in, the, in that computer over there. Our library, uh, very focused library, just like everything in the museum, uh, is focused on Bomber Command. So is the library. So you won't find just general aviation books here. Everything that we get just about is focused on uh, Bomber Command, the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan, or at least significant Canadian uh, military uh, aviation history. Uh, around the back here we have uh, uh, a whole bunch of manuals, uh, engine manuals and uh, aircraft manuals, again, most of which pertain to the collection in the museum. Sure, and, and the guys that are restoring in the North Hangar, they may be coming in to look at data on a rebuild or an engine or an airframe, yep. and they can come here and get it. Oh yeah, they come here and get it. And, and again, it's all, uh, over the past two and a half years, we've done a, made huge strides in cataloging all this stuff, so we know what we have, and it's all searchable, like all, all these books. Uh, you know, they're all, they're all have a number of tags, so if you're looking for a certain squadron or a certain training unit, or a certain guy's name, or that kind of thing, you can look in the computer and it'll pick out the books that, uh, that uh, connect to that. So we've made a lot of uh, progress over the last few years doing that. And uh, the last piece of the puzzle, which is currently being worked on now by John Noyce, is, uh, is all these CDs and DVDs down here. And they're in the process of being properly cataloged so we can search and find things. Right, and uh, now I've assisted you on some of the research and there's some very interesting, unique uh, pieces of history, uh, certain log books, uh, certain stories about airmen. And um, uh, now what I found interesting is as the airmen pass away, the families of these airmen that flew in bombers, they may not know what grandpa or uncle or dad did. But they come to us and they're saying, can you help us with finding what grandpa did or uncle did in World War II in the RCAF? So have you had any experience with that? And uh, um, you've got a few interesting stories where you're in the library, you're reading something, researching somebody, or you're reading a file. And then um, I don't know if you recall that one where the daughter Oh yes, the yeah. daughter walked in. Can you uh, tell us that interesting story? Well, that was that was strange. I was just going through one of these files, and uh, and I pulled one out uh, 
and I can't remember why, but I was going through it. And so this is there. one. This is one of the hundreds and hundreds of files that we have. And you were just happened to be reading that one on that day. That's right. Yeah, and I and I looked at it and and put it back in. And five minutes later, this lady walks in, and uh, she had a piece of paper that she'd photocopied from the uh, the big book at the front with all the RCF biographies. And she said, uh, you know, my uncle, I think it was. You know, my uncle was. Uh, killed in the RCF, and the people at the front desk were kind enough to copy this, and they said, you might have some more information. And it was that guy. You mean the, the, guy that guy. You, the guy that you had just randomly yeah, yeah. was and reading his file, and she walks in. And she walks in, and, the file, and she didn't know anything about hardly about this guy. And I had tons of stuff in the, uh, in the file. Wow. It's, it's, so it's amazing. That's what I find interesting is now that the veterans are fading away, um, you know, average age is 89 or 90 now for our Bomber Command veterans. I find that more and more of the families are coming here to find out. And uh, sometimes we're able to help them discover family history that could be important. Well, it's, it is important for them. It's important for us, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's rewarding to be able to give that to the families when they know nothing. Oh yeah. They, I mean, they're thrilled to find out anything. A lot of them will just come in here and say, well, you know, my grandpa was in bomber or my grandpa flew bombers. I think he flew a Halifax and it uh, we don't know what squadron or anything, but uh, it had a it had an eagle on it or something, and you know that's all they know. And we can start digging around in here and finding information for sure. them. Sure. And if, if they if they were killed, you know, there's lots of information about them, like in these Charlie books here of, of bomber command losses. Right. If guys were lost, but if they're just if they survived, it's harder to find information. Yeah. This is a wonderful book here. Uh, had given to us by a fellow named Richard Covell, who's done a huge amount of research and documentation on Six Group, the Canadian, uh, the Canadian Bomber Squadron Group, and this book contains the names of all the guys in the RCAF and Six Group, not just the uh, ones who were killed. So some people come in here and, and you know they'll they'll say what they know about about their uh, their relative, and, and we'll say, well, did he survive? And they'll say, yeah. And if he did, we know we're not going to find any information back there about him. But in right. this book, we can at least find their crew position, the squadrons they flew in, and their, uh, their regimental numbers. Yes, I, I've used this book myself, and it's amazing. It's the reverse. If a, a, a fellow is killed in action in a bombers in World War II, there is a record. We, we can usually find records on him. But if he was fortunate enough to survive... It's tough to find this guy. Yeah. And this book here is worth its weight in gold from Richard Koval because now we can go and find the actual living guys, their regimental numbers, their squadron, their positions on the crew. So we've been able to help many people with this. Right, and that's just the beginning. You know, once they know the squadron, if they're interested, they can, they can dig a little deeper and there's, there's ways of uh, getting information. Uh, to you know to compliment this. but I would I would say to our audience out there that if you have a grandfather a father an uncle who was in Royal Canadian Air Force I would say leaning towards bombers if you come here to the Bomber Command Museum of Canada we can help you find your family history find that Air Force history and uh, uh, Dave uh, you've seen uh, you are one of the founders of the original museum here uh, building up the lank and putting a building around it, and uh, how do you how do you feel about that? Does it feel quite rewarding? How do you uh, are you upbeat about it? How do you like that? Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's dominated my life, I guess, since uh, we started the project in 1986, and uh, it's gone beyond any of our wildest dreams, and uh, and it's just has still has all kinds of momentum and, uh, and shows no sign of no sign of stopping so it's uh it's been it's been fun and you know you sort of step back and look around and see all the things we've uh, accomplished it's uh it's pretty uh, pretty um, impressive sure and uh i was going to tell the audience about uh, uh our museum here uh worked diligently for many months collecting all the pinup girls nose arts that were on bombers and we have on a database here 
uh, over, what is it now, last count, Dave? Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Uh, oh, I think we've got, I think we've got something like 11 or 1,200 different nose art images and uh, over 2,000 different photographs. You right. know? So it's, uh, and, and again, it's, it's all organized into a searchable database, so you can... Right. Uh, you know, you can search it by squadron or by aircraft type, or sure. if you if you know that it was a, you know, if, if, if it was a, uh, an eagle or something on the part of the nose arch, you can search for that, and, and you can find these. Sure. Well, I'm seeing right behind you here, Sugar's Blues, a nose art panel. Here's a pinup girl uh, on a Lancaster of 428 Ghost Squadron, and this is a replica of the actual nose art that was painted on a Lancaster with 428 Squadron. So you see, these are the images that we've been saving. And we have, as Dave said, over 1,200 nose art images. So we're willing to share them with people if they want to research a special nose art of grandpa or father. And uh, it's just another feature of the uh, library here at the Bomber Command Museum of Canada.